uh, 7-Elevens, even though they're all franchisee run for the most part, they're all guaranteed, all the leases are guaranteed by the corporation. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in today. Um, I've had a lot of requests uh, to talk about triple net properties, and so for that, I reached out to George Pino. George, thank you for coming in today. Thanks um, for having me. George had a little oral surgery, so yeah. if his bite plate? Uh, yeah, I have like a little uh, my front, my front teeth. There. Okay, so yeah. if it goes flying across the room, just it may. <laughs> be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, George, thank you for coming in. George uh, has a real uh, has a focus on triple net investments. So, uh, you've done triple net investments in what thirty some states. About that, um, okay. you know, primarily focusing on single tenant triple net leases, um, which uh, can be a great investment opportunity for a lot of different investors for different types of uh, part of the portfolio. Can you kind of, I guess, let's cut, let's start from the beginning. Okay. What is a triple net investment? Okay. Well, uh, triple net basically means that the lease rate is net 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 to the landlord meaning they don't have any expenses or any uh, costs associated with the operations of the property the tenant actually pays for all of that so the tenant will pay for all the repairs the tenant will pay for all the maintenance the tenant will pay for the insurance as well as the uh, property taxes so all that is paid for by the tenant so the landlord receives a net check of the rent okay um, who is the uh typical buyer of triple net properties you know it varies um but uh typically we older look for, younger the demographics are uh, pretty varied but uh, we are seeing uh, lately we've seen a pretty good shift in a little bit older demographic those that are looking for more of a uh, stabilized cash flow investment um, okay. as opposed to a uh, large appreciation um, so they know exactly what they're getting into because a lot of the single tenant triple net leases tend to be a long-term lease anywhere from 15 to 20 years potentially um, up to 40 or 60 years with options oh wow mm -hmm. who would typically do like a 60-year lease um, well you see like uh, Walgreens or CVS okay. um, drug stores um, most structures of leases like the fast foods for instance um, are typically in the 15 to 20 year initial term with four or five year options. Okay. So they could potentially type the property for 40 years with the options. Um, a lot of the drug stores actually may have a 60 year lease with uh, potentials for cancellations at certain periods during the lease term. Okay. Um, what? How, how do you value a triple net investment? Uh, Good question. Um, you, know, you have to take a look at uh, quite a few different things. You know, the value really depends on the length of the lease, okay. the location of the property. You know, I think location, location, location. It's just as true for single tenant triple net leases as it is for any other real estate. Um, also, the tenant um, it can play a big factor as well. well. I would think so. If you have somebody that's a regional compared to a national, that has to be a create a pretty big difference, doesn't it? It can be huge, especially yeah. if it's a corporate guaranteed lease right. versus a franchisee guaranteed lease. Oh, so, yeah. Could you actually, I'm mm -hmm. going to stop you there and let's, because you threw that yeah. out there about corporate guaranteed and friend. Can you, yeah, can you break yeah. that down, please? Well, depending on the tenant, many, many of the, uh, uh, the lease guarantor is, you know, even though it may be, let's say, a Burger King's, mm -hmm. for instance, um, you know, 98% of all Burger King's are franchisee owned. Oh, okay. So most of those leases are actually guaranteed by the franchisee. Okay. That doesn't mean it's bad because some of the franchisees can own four or five hundred locations. So they wow. can be just as strong as some of the larger corporations yeah. um, that uh, own three hundred locations. Um, so you know that's not necessarily a bad thing. But then you have something like McDonald's, where majority of them, even though they're franchises, mo majority of the leases are all guaranteed by the corporate McDonald's. So, you know, you have a very strong guarantee coming in on a, you know, the uh, McDonald's USA. And uh, same with, uh, you know, if you're looking for that type of strong guarantee, you have uh, 7-Elevens. Even though they're all franchisee run for the most part, they're all guaranteed, all the leases are guaranteed by the corporation. Um, Jack in the Box used to do that. We're seeing a little bit of a switch where they're okay. doing a little bit more franchise guarantee. So it really depends on the location, the lease, and you know the, who the guarantor really is. So yeah, okay. So since I kind of took a sidetrack back to valuation, yeah. so if you're you're really you would place a higher value on a big national chain, correct? 
Well, um, you would typically place a, uh, and, and what we do is we look at uh, capitalization rates or cap okay. rates and when we go to trade it. So um, a larger corporate guaranteed chain, national chain, would typically trade at a lower cap rate, um, so therefore higher price okay. than one that uh, is a regional or a local. Okay. Um, there are some exceptions to the rule because there are certain, uh, some regional companies that uh, maybe the bell of the ball at the time um, right. right now and they're really trading at low cap rates. You know, you have in and out for instance. Yep. Um, everyone loves them. They think it's a great concept. So they think it's a uh, risk versus reward. So they're willing to pay a little bit more with a little bit less uh, because the risk is mitigated, they feel. And uh, so therefore, you know, they're paying a little bit more for it. Same goes for uh, uh, El Pollo Loco seems to be one as well that right. uh, seems to trade at a uh, for the size uh, at a fo fairly low cap rate and Del Taco. Um, so, um, you know, there's definitely some that are uh, uh, are regional companies that are trading more on a cap rate basis that national companies would compare to. Okay. Um, what kind of location do you look for? You know, um, I look for locations that are one in growth areas. You know, first thing we do is look at the demographics. Okay. What are the demographics within the area? What, um, how, you know, income demographics and growth demographics. Okay. Um, what's the expectation? What was it five years ago? What is it today? What's the expectation five years from now? For both on the income level and also in population. So we start looking at that. And then we start bearing down into the actual location. You know, we look for, you know, the best location would be a, uh, hard corner that it meaning a uh, corner that is signalized, signalized intersection. intersection that has high traffic counts okay. maybe uh, other, well some foot traffic depending on the city and the location but generally we we'll look at cars per day um, but also look for other traffic generators you know is it an out parcel to a super Walmart center is it a uh, you know is it right next to a university or school or hospital okay. um, things that are not necessarily going to change in the long term but are always going to be in demand and always going to drive traffic to that location so we look for that um, the next we look for is how difficult is it to replace that location meaning um, is there a lot of vacant land in the immediate area can they easily move if the lease is over next door or two doors down or a block down and not really affect the business um, so when you look at infill cities um, that can be very difficult and uh, in fact certain cities especially in California you have Los Angeles San Diego San Francisco um, you know they all have moratoriums on fast food drive throughs okay. so because of that any fast food is uh, right now in demand because you can't replace those locations it has barriers to entry so when you have those type of barriers to entry, um, it really makes the investment a little bit safer. Okay. Um, the um, I mean, I see this as an opportunity for almost everybody. I mean, from somebody that is that no, the very little risk, and I almost said no risk, but there's always risk. But uh, wants very little risk. I could see this would be a good investment if you get a national chain, corporate guaranteed, uh, and if you're younger you're starting to create a fund or syndicating deals, it'd be a good way to kind of start as a platform to build off of and go for, you know, start off with a good number of these triple net investments and then move it into higher risk as you're going? Well, um, absolutely. I think it's right for everybody and it's not just right for everybody in that aspect, but there's other ways to create value. Okay. You know, um, even leases that are shorter in term. Um, they may trade at a higher cap rate because of the risk, but you can mitigate that by understanding, you know, some of the older leases have, um, are tied to performance, meaning they have percentage rent or the store has to report sales. So if you know what the sales are, you know what the average sales are for, the, for that type of uh, location or that type of product, um, you can really determine whether or not they're planning on staying there. And by so doing, you can either renegotiate or bring in somebody else, especially if you know the demographics and you know the area. For instance, um, Chick-fil-A right now is making a huge push to grow in Southern California. Okay. And because of the moratoriums in some of the areas, it's very difficult to find uh, locations for them. 
However, they're also paying some of the highest rents, and they also trade at some of the lowest cap rates. So it's a win-win for an investor if they sure. can bring Chick-fil-A in to replace a Burger King or replace a Taco Bell or replace a Del Taco um, or other fast food concept because they're trading at a lower cap rate. They're willing to pay higher rents. They're outbidding most people out there. Corporate guarantee. And you can increase the value, and in some cases, it's double the to value. Beat. <laughs> tough to beat, but you need to have the right location where you know the lease term is very short, right. um, no options, or you might be able to buy out the tenants. So you can buy them out, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. You know what the length. Absolutely. Yeah, the um, you know, let's say you're an investor. I want to hear your best case scenario. I guess what's the best deal you've done with a triple net investment? Well. Um, you know, I actually ended up, uh, uh, I sold a Del Taco to a client of mine. Mm -hmm. um, it had seven years remaining on the lease, and it was up okay. in Hesperia. Um, older property, it had already been in for 40 years. And uh, it, the client was actually a little unsure, wasn't sure if they should buy it. My recommendation was absolutely, I think this is a great investment. There's seven years left on the lease. Seven years left on the lease. Why would you why. make that decision? Well, it was one of the older leases. They're paying percentage rent. They're only paying five percent rent over sales. Oh. So now, which is really low for a fast food margin, but more importantly, the sales at the location they were doing 150 percent of average store sales on a system wide basis. Okay. So this was a location that they were not going to want to leave. Right. Now. What ended up happening, um, he ended up buying the property and uh, going forward and, and you know, a few months later he decided, you know, I really want another property instead. I, you know, he was still worried about the lease renewal, what was happening, he goes, can you sell this for me? And uh, it was not anything I did, it just happened to be right timing. Right. <laughs> so I was able to sell that at a little bit of a profit to sell my, uh, to cover commissions and cost of sale and stuff, so we actually made a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Um, probably about almost a five ten percent return. Okay. And what time frame? Um, this was only in about a six month time frame. Okay. Uh, six seven month time frame. Really good. Not yeah. bad. So on a yield basis, he probably uh, ended up he paid all cash, but you know it was probably closer to a ten eleven percent return. Okay. Now the client, I actually ended up selling it to another client of ours, and that yeah. client was asking the same questions, and I said, well, if you're really concerned, let me renegotiate the lease now. Okay. And. Uh, you know, of course, that's something that's extremely difficult to do, to sure. negotiate a lease that still has seven years remaining on it because they yeah. have no reason to. Right. So um, he was more concerned about the length of the lease. So what I did was I went to Corporate Del Taco, I gave him a call and said, you know, I'd like to talk about renewing the lease. And they said, we have seven years remaining. Why should we renew the lease now? My reply back was, it's a great location. You want to be here eight years from now. Right. And we're going to make this as easy as possible. So what we ended up doing was negotiating a lease extension, um, a full brand new lease, 15 year term, two five year options, um, a little bit of a bump even, and them agreeing to do a remodel on the location at their cost. Okay. Um, so landlord was out of pocket, nothing, had a brand new lease. Um, we ended up being able to, uh, that was a five, uh, we sold it to them at a 5.75 cap because of the uh, length of the original sure. lease and no options. With the brand new lease and new options and the increase in the price, we sold at a 4.2, we got an offer, I didn't sell it, got an offer almost eight months later at a 4.25 cap, over a million dollars more than what they paid. My client said, at first didn't want to take it, but then decided to take it, ended up selling it, okay. um, making a huge uh, return, um, close I to- I think yeah. so. It was uh, close to about a, I want to say about 65% return in right. less than a year. Those um, don't come around. No, right? those don't. But you asked for the best <laughs> so one. No, yeah. So, yeah. You asked for the best <laughs> one. Um, and then we actually in, uh, went and purchased a uh, Burger King that was a uh, large franchisee corporate guaranteed out okay. of Tennessee that um, increased his income even more. And uh, he was able to... Uh, look for cash flow, um, which is what he really wanted. Okay. Um, he didn't care about the valuations, more about the cash flow because he was right. retiring. Okay. So it worked out great for everybody. Yeah. Well, I love to hear those stories. Um, okay. Uh, I think we should. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? We're getting kind of long here, so. No. You know, I, I think we 
covered a pretty uh, pretty good uh, generality of the single tandem triple right. necks. If you'd like to learn more, please do feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, happy to help out. Um, I think you should be part of everybody's investment portfolio. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great opportunity and uh, one of the most liquid forms of real estate that there is. Yeah, always it a market. Be, it's it's a great way to, to really get yourself going with investing. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.